Greetings, you squishy organics in need of immediate protection, and welcome back to Stellaris with me, Alathrix. And of course, welcome to our newest full playthrough once again using the Gigastructural Engineering mod. Now, originally, I wasn't going to do this full playthrough since the Overlord DLC is arriving very soon, but then I've noticed a lot of people asking me to cover the other, other endgame crisis. The Eternum, I believe they're called, the super precursor civilization at the center of the galaxy, which acts very much like a fallen empire eventually waking up and wanting to take the galaxy for itself. But unlike the other fallen empires, it starts with Behemoth Worldcraft and millions upon millions of fleet power and is basically the endgame crisis. And similar to the Katzen, we have events to try and keep them asleep or weaken them before they finally wake up, and hopefully, using this empire and uniting the entire galaxy under our militaristic rule, we can stand a chance against them. So who exactly are we? We are the Voidborn Unifiers, the last remnants of a galactic militaristic superpower which was wiped out by the Eternum some many, many thousands of years ago. We are the last little tiny bit of that empire, and we were spared purely because we are the Enforcers. This species was not the main species of this empire, they were simply used as shock troops and to maintain order on the worlds, and were almost non-sapient. But after thousands of years of the Empire being wiped out, we gain sapience, we gain dominance of our section of the ring world we live on, and now finally we enter the galactic stage to unite the galaxy against the oncoming threat. They seem to be blissfully unaware that any of this happened, and we need to remind them by showing them how scary we are, and then reminding them that we got destroyed. So the reason why I want to use this type of empire really is twofold. First of all, I haven't used a lithoid empire in ages. They can pretty much go onto any world they want, but they're very slow growing and I just find them very fun because of that. We do have Void Home here, which is our Penrose ring world. So we don't have any guaranteed worlds, so obviously high habitability is good. But also I haven't got access to any of the militaristic mega structures yet within structural engineering. I haven't done the super shipyard, which I think has something ridiculous like 90 shipyards in the end or something like that. I also haven't had the admiralty stations that we've seen the Katzen build recently. And on top of that, it's actually a third reason, I haven't had a more militaristic federation in ages. Just going more standard militarist rather than going with a psychic side of things or the genetic stuff or anything like that. We're just going to go very st very standard, very heavily just into military and lots of alloy production. So a lot of mega structure research is going to be key for us. And yeah, the military federations. We have the Martial Alliance, or whatever that's actually called, the pure military one. But then we also have the Domination version, which is the... I can never remember the name of that thing. I'm going to just quickly Google it while I'm talking to you. This. Hegemony. That thing. So the Martial Alliance is really good because lots more firepower, but it's a bit more difficult to expand that federation. And the Domination version is really good because you can force people to join you very easily. So you can quickly dominate the entire galaxy, which is the whole point of this run. I want the entire galaxy to be one giant federation. I want a huge federation fleet, and I want to be the custodian and have that fleet as well. So massive fleets all under our control. Just the basic ships, though. So no attack moons and everything else. Maybe I'll end up with them because the enemy we're going to face is ridiculous. But m just mostly focusing on things like that. Also, I want to go with kinetic weapons, missiles. Just to be on theme with all that kind of stuff. So I think these are the settings we're going to go with. We have the end game start year at 2350, so that's when the Eternum will kind of wake up. We have the mid game start year a little bit early again, which will also be how quickly we can get into the galactic core. We have a few more AI empires than usual, and other than that, it's all pretty standard. So with that, let's get going and let's unite the galaxy against our common threat, which I don't even know about, but we do. Hey there everyone, as is tradition with these full playthroughs, it is I, Future Lathrix, just saying that this video took a ridiculous amount of time to make, as they always do, and it was incredibly fun. So two things I want to say about this full playthrough. First of all, stick around for a while when it seems like the game has ended, because it hasn't, and there is loads more to see with the psionic capabilities, which we'll get into, along with the birch world itself. On top of that, I keep on changing how I pronounce the Empire's name in the center of the galaxy. I think I've stuck with Eternum, 
and Eternite, but I will pronounce it in a myriad of different ways throughout this video. That's just the classic dyslex dyslexic dyslexic future 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 Lathrix here. Apologizing for future Lathrix and his inability to speak there because of course he is dyslexic and has a speech impediment and also apologizing for future future Lathrix which will not even be in this video for his crimes. Now I do want to say if you do like this video please give a like and a comment it helps out massively. I hate shilling for these videos but it's what allows them to do so well on the channel. They are algorithm poison unless it's interacted with then it becomes absolutely fantastic for the channel and as we've seen some actual channel growth for once lately it has been massively appreciated by me now i do hope you enjoy the video i clearly need some sleep so do all of the lathrixes give me a like and i can sleep please i now realize i didn't even cover our ethics or civics Okay, so pretty simple. We are xenophiles since we do want everyone to join us and be our friends. We will only go to war with them if they won't join willingly. And honestly, maybe we'll leave them to later to become our protectorate if they're not particularly egregious to us. Anything which is a threat to life, we will attack pretty darn quickly. Fanatic militarists for obvious reasons. We are distinguished admiralty because again, fits the empire. And masterful crafters was more of a ply style choice than anything else. I think we're going to end up with lots of artisans. I want our population to be happy, so probably social welfare and stuff just with this kind of theme of empire and yeah the extra consumer goods are great extra trade, trade value is great especially since we're xenophile with extra trade value anyway and then engineering research i just really love masterful crafters i just find it makes everything smoother even if it's not one of the more powerful ones i just really enjoy it and we are at the very top of the galaxy oh yeah and our species is dumb there we are like no intellect slow learners but strong Okay, so for this, we don't want the Katzen to be allowed. We don't want the Blockets. That's not our goal at the moment. So you can go away. So yeah, no Katzen, no Blockets. Unlimited Mega Structures because it's more fun. Uh, Fallen Empires all allowed. That's absolutely fine. Galactic Federation. Sure. I think that's pretty much everything. Oh, no, no. There we are. The Eternum. So the Eternum, I think I can guarantee it. There's the default. There we go. The Galactic Core will always be occupied by the Eternum, an ancient and powerful precursor civilization residing on a birch world. That is our goal. So it's definitely going to be there, and it will wake up near our endgame. I'm also, because people said this can cause some funny things with the normal empires, I am going to allow unlimited construction of the regular vanilla mega structures. because honestly, the ones you get from Gigastructural Engineering are stronger anyway. Outside of the Science Nexus, I can't see why I'd build multiple of these. However, I guess it would be really fun to build multiple... Where are you? Multiple interstellar assemblies to get ultimate diplomatic power quite quickly, or the art installations for, like, unlimited uh, amenities, or lots of coordination centers. But they all cost, like, 300 influence, so, yeah, I can't see myself really taking advantage of this, but apparently it does make the vanilla empires a little bit more likely to build them, and build multiple of them, which can be weird to see. And that's it, I think. So with that... I'll see you all soon when something interesting happens. We are we are on basically just like normal ring world, but with extra districts. And we have two of them around our relic Penrosphere, which we can repair later. But for now, we need some aggressive expansion and we need to focus on getting our alloy production as high as possible. We want to go to war very quickly to make some vassals, which can then join our federation later. In terms of our traditions, we're probably going to go either expansion or military and then diplomacy. Change of plan. We're going with domination first. It makes our workers more efficient, which isn't the most important thing, but it gives us more to our edicts funds. It gives us more influence so we can spread faster and gives us access to the federation type if I choose to go down that route. So domination into diplomacy. Also, clear blocker cost being reduced is good because we do have very unique ones of those like every other ring world. Yeah, that was a smart choice, I think. So not the most insane start just yet, but a decent one. Yeah, so we have one, two, three, four worlds already, which is great. Obviously, we have the second section of the ring world, and we are rapidly taking away all of the unique um, tunnels? 
Rebels? Yeah, since they give us all the resources, whereas the Rebel is just purely for districts, so we can build up our specialist stuff as soon as possible. Now, what we really need is robots. I don't think I'm going to go down the synthetic route, because I don't think it fits the theme of the Empire personally, and I've done that so many times, but I do think I'm going to go Cyborg. The reason is, it makes our army damage higher, and increases our lifespan, so it makes the Enforcer units stronger than they already were, which I think is the whole point of them. They're going to be perfect, but still non-machines. They use cybernetic implants, but not that. That also means, though, that we get... Oh, it's so annoying. We also get access to um, decent synths, which we can build quickly, So, which is good because our population is going to suck for ages, and I don't really want the other species with us. Although, saying that, we could go with... Xeno compatibility. That is actually pretty good, since we are going to have lots of friends. Maybe. We'll see how it goes. There's lots of options for us, but I don't think I'm going to go down any normal ascension path fully. Just change the voice from Lithoid over to Soldier. This channel is now under military control. Since I never get to use that. transmitted here and report any insurgent activity to the nearest occupation officer. Our neighbour is Fanatic Authoritarian, which I don't think we particularly have a thing against, as long as they're not slavers, I'd imagine. And they are militarist, which we do love. So, yeah, I send over all my um, envoys, so hopefully we'll be friends with them. So we are going with diplomacy. Let's see if we can make a really early federation between our two militarist empires. So, we have the High Kingdom here. We also have the Monopoly. The Monopoly are fanatic egalitarian militarists. So naturally, they're already at war. So I can't make a federation just yet. Well, it wasn't the original plan, but honestly, I just want this to get sorted. Now, there's a lot of options here. I can't remember the last time I had a Martial Alliance. I also can't remember the last time I had one of these. I think Martial Alliance, because it will just increase our power level, and we're getting it so early, we can get a lot of the really cool stuff at the end. So, yeah, let's go with that. So we're going with our neighbours here to the left. Construction complete. Rather than the right for now, because honestly, these two will not stop warring, just warring with each other. And I'd imagine us looking down on that, just these pointless wars doing nothing but losing lives. They're not even uniting or anything. I'm hoping you'd have a problem with them, right? No. Okay, so I'm hoping, yes, associations, uh, association status is allowed here. So maybe we can get at least the authoritarians on our side, but we'll see. We will see. Oh, you in control of this? Okay, looks like you're winning the war, so we're choosing the right person here. Obviously, I want to increase the power of our federation. So yeah, so near the end, we get twice damage to endgame crisis factions. I don't know if the Eternum are included there. The amount members contribute towards the federation navy capacity is increased. They also get access to... I think that's the highest fleet contribution you can have, and it's quite early as well. Which is quite nice. Vote white diplomatic is what we want. We honestly want president decides as soon as possible. Because we want full control. Uh, same with succession type. What we want is a martial challenge. Thankfully that's only level 2. So I think after a very short while we will have pretty much total control. So for those unaware... There is a very simple way to exploit the Federation fleet system. However, I probably don't have enough resources to do it right now. But essentially, the game doesn't register a Federation fleet until it's, well, ship, until it's fully created. So, yeah, I can't really do it now, but I'll definitely do this later. It allows us to make Federation fleets far larger than you expect by just queuing up loads so we can only have 13, if I had more resources I could queue up 30 or 40 and they would all still go through the construction process and be created and be added to the Federation fleet. Remember, the Federation fleet does not cost upkeep, so that's where you want all of your ships. So that's definitely something for later. For now, it's not really something I can really do, so that was a waste of resources, but, you know, I need the alloys for things anyway, it's not a big deal. Such so as grabbing more worlds. So the funniest thing just happened, which makes this start go from good to utterly brilliant theme-wise. These two squabbling kids next to us basically knocked out each other's fleet, but 
the authoritarians lost the war. And because of that, they got really scared and they became our protectorate because they could see the end of their lives approaching them. They're stuck here and their neighbors want to kill them. Well, the monopoly is also weakened, if not by as much I couldn't offer protectorate status, for instance. So I'm going to see if we can go to war to vassalize them. I'm hoping System we vote yes. Ships refitted. I think we're going to win this one fairly easily because of, they're just in a really weakened state right now. And I'm taking advantage of that. Zoom. And once that happens, they'll also join the Federation. Not just as our, our, as our vassal, but they'll also join our Federation. So then I have this entire section of the galaxy already in one hyper-federation. Unification! I've managed to get a lot of influence from events like the Bunker Bot event, etc. So I'm spending all of it, or almost all of it, just to grab this system here because, well, there's this. I want that. That's my future right there. At the very top of the galaxy, that's going to be mine. Also, we have the ghost robot here, which won't actually do anything, but there's also a tundra world and a desert world on the way. There's a really cool system over here. Behemoth, is it? Yeah. With a shrouded world. Crystal-infused world. I mean, that just looks so cool. I won't be able to get that, though, as well, but as long as I get um, these three, I'll be really happy. The war's going well. Uh, they had a bastion, which did take out a lot of ships, but that was pretty easy. Our allies are actually following us, which is so rare and so beautiful. So I am certain they're going to become our vassal. It also means we're going to get access to all this, because they won't be able to expand naturally, so I'm going to try and grab all this stuff. Also, I don't know why they, they gave up their um, independence so easily. Their origin is the dragon. They had this thing protecting their home world. You know what? Sure. Ooh, yes, influence. Any event which offers me influence at the moment, I'm taking as influence. I need to grab as much as I can before our Federation expands too much. Maybe I'm not Xenophile enough to see this event much, but this was from the event where you accidentally kill the life which was starting to form around one of the gas giants. You actually get a negative modifier if you're a Xenophile for doing that, but when you fix it, you get plus 10% happiness and plus 5 stability for 5 years, which is really insanely good. So... I didn't realise that the enemy were attacking the Monopoly were only on habitats, and I thought they had at least one of the world, so I was fine allowing our neighbour to claim their home system. We've destroyed their home system. On the upside... A lot of their species did just flee to our empire, so we do have a secondary species now. Ooh. A good secondary species. Okay, you're only going to stay on the Penrose rings, but that's great. So habitat preference and void dweller. Yeah, of course they are. They're void dwellers. Pop output and habitats plus 15%. Uh, oh, only habitats... It's just that the negatives don't happen if they're on artificial worlds. Oh, that's a shame. That is a shame. Yeah, you're not getting a bonus, right? Let's just check. Yeah. Okay, so we need to remove Void Dweller if we can. Uh, but they are still intelligent and strong. Wasteful is annoying, but they're not particularly bad in terms of their um, Empire type. And we have saved them, so yay. And you can't grab systems anyway because you're my vassal so all this is up for the grabs brilliant okay you're going over there i'm taking all this territory i just need to make sure to grab this system to stop them going like that because i want this i want that i want that on that okay there's a lot of stuff we're grabbing at the moment gonna need loads of influence i need to build more ships we're now going to war with the empires over here, and I'm realising something. I don't particularly want to absorb many more empires. In fact, after I absorb the High Kingdom, making them into us, I don't really want any more after that, because I like the idea of having more vassals and everything. But vassals are good. Tributaries, if I don't plan on absorbing them, might be better. Now, sadly, I did go to war to vassalise this empire, but I think it's, um, its friends, the other Federation members, I will be simply absorbing. 
Now, so far, I have no idea what their fleet strength is. I know they were just at war, which is what prompted me to attack. They were attacking the mandate over here, and um, I think they won. Yeah, the kind was a bit neutral, so I'm hoping they've lost a lot of their ships. So I can just run in, take all of this space over here, and quickly vassalize them. Then, of course, the Federation is weakened, and we'll make tributaries of everything else. Pay me so that I may save the galaxy. Okay, finally, we should get the win here. That took a long time. We lost our Federation fleet but basically twice over, but thankfully all of our forces kept on replenishing it for us, so thank you to my allies. Okay, so now these are my vassals. Wow, you just obliterated what you, what you actually had. Uh, so let's let the U2, who are now a lot weaker. Yeah, combined, it was actually a very close fight. I mean, that was so much bigger. Okay, return home. Are you isolationists? Yeah. You're going to be quite tough to destroy them, but you are their next target. Do we just go straight after you right now, maybe? It's hard to tell what I should do. You know what? Yeah, we're going to go straight after you. Since our forces are already here, it's going to move on, attack the mandate, hopefully this time... I'll remember to make them my tributary. That way we can get their minerals and their energy, which will help to fuel our war efforts. Trying to go more and more into alloys now. I'm now being able to make the very basic mega structures. That's the particle accelerator, etc. Now, I know that I really shouldn't be building these around the larger stars, but the thing is, I have so many stars already to use, and a lot of them I don't really mind too much, and we're probably not going to go super, super heavy into mega structures in this run. Hopefully soon I can build the military one since I've just got galactic force projection. Plus 80 navy capacity, plus 20 fleet command limit, and then the military bastions, which I've never actually built before because I've never had that trait. Turns out they're actually very, very strong. Uh, they have like 10k plus fleet power minimum from what I've seen. Oh, sadly we didn't get that because I forgot to um, nominate ourselves. But they have split up, so there's a 4k here if we quickly run this down. There we are. Don't know where the rest of them went, I think they moved off this way, so we can just do that. And hopefully that's the majority of their fleet of the other group. Everything else is looking pretty good. Now, here's the thing. I'm actually getting the tech right now, which would allow us to have mind over matter. In fact, I may have just got it. Do we go down the psychic route? Um, I think that actually makes sense for our empire. It makes us stronger and able to make psychic warriors. We are already floating rocks, and there are psychic megastructures. Now, I do already know a spoiler for one of them. I know that there's one called the Hyper Siphon. I think there's a weapon variety as well, but the Hyper Siphon will essentially force the Unbidden to spawn. But it is really powerful, so loads of energy and research, I think, is what it gives you. I think it might just augment populations. Either way, very powerful mega structure if you have... I don't know if it's Mind Over Matter and Transcendence, so I'm not quite sure if I'll actually go for that. But it would be fun. Oh, it would be fun. Plus, we are becoming strong already. We could go Cloud Lightning. That would be fun. Though, I like my, my um, kinetic weapons. I don't know. Uh, I think I may actually go with the Psychic Option regardless, though. Something different. I do like my Covenants. Maybe we can even go with the Eater of Worlds for once, which is the, the more military one, but at the cost of a few population here and there. This empire has fallen, and now we get 25% of its monthly energy and minerals, which will help to fund everything we're currently doing. Now, currently, the hierarchy over here is actually superior to us, fleet power-wise, so is consumer products over here. So, the real question is, what do we do? Do we just charge on ahead and hope our, our allies follow us? Which, honestly, they have been... Take point has actually been working, or do we hang back for a while? Also, how do we even get to them? What? Oh! This little section... You're a tiny little empire, aren't you? Uh... Demand tribute, sure. Let's just take this small empire first, then, then decide. The Empire, which was next to us originally, has been completely devoured by us. 
A new empire has formed. I don't quite know what happened here. They were going to accept protectorate status. Okay, still are. But I'm currently at war to take over the authority, which is one of the two remaining forces of this old federation. Ooh, and they're actually hurting us quite badly. Interesting. Okay, go this way so you can reinforce from our allies. And that's it, really. Just grabbing these small things because these fellas are currently at war. So I can't actually demand anything. Maybe I should start building up my own fleet rather than the Federation fleet for once. But at the same time, I could be spending all those alloys on more and more macro engineering sites and more and more stellar particle accelerators. Which increase our armor and our shields. Which is pretty cool. Ooh, and you, I'm gonna scrap. Thanks to the diplomatic efforts of the Empire to our west, the League, the Confederation has just joined our Federation. And they're actually more powerful than me. They are superior fleet power-wise to us, which makes our Federation now considerably stronger. So next will be the Hierarchy, now that they've stopped going to war. And honestly, our neighbours can take them by themselves. They may have a... Um... Ooh, actually, they may have a ceasefire for now, so it might, it might take a little while. But soon, the hierarchy will follow. I'll make them my tributary as well. And then half of the galaxy is already following our orders. I'm now also researching the hyperlanes to get to the center of the galaxy so that we can find out about the big bad. When the first survey drones ventured into the newly revealed galactic core, we expected them to find a supermassive black hole surrounded by a myriad of stars. But the truth of what lies within our galaxy's heart is both fascinating and deeply troubling. It is already inhabited. Indeed, it appears that a tremendously old precursor empire, from which we've been able to decipher, calls themselves Eternum, occupies the innermost portion of the galactic centre. Long-range survey beams have revealed that their entire civilization is seemingly centred around a gigantic construct built over the galactic core itself, a birch world, which likely houses a vast majority of their population. Interestingly, surrounding systems have been rearranged into a hexagon because it is indeed the bestagon, presumably by them, and contains an array of advanced and sometimes decaying megastructures that most certainly serves to support the central birch world. This ancient civilization is undoubtedly light years ahead of both of us, of both us and even the fallen empires in terms of technological development, and it would appear, uh, and it would most likely be best not to disturb them. Fortunately, for our own sake, they appear to be relatively decrepit and stagnant, and will likely consider the rest of the galaxy to not be worth their attention. That was actually attempt like number twelve. My dyslexia was hitting me like a hammer then. Okay, so we're being greeted by a robot. Do we get to see the birch world? There it is. Birch world with mega structures. Oh, hyper siphons. That's what I want to be able to make. So we have hyper siphons around it, stellar particle accelerators. We have, I think that's a, yeah, a ruined orchid complex. Okay. The functioning one. We have worlds. Obviously, this is a ridiculously powerful empire indeed. And then in, in the hexagon, we have a star lifter with loads of asteroid manufacturers. Ruined Dyson, eh, ruined Dyson Sphere, ruined Gigaforge. Oh, a functioning Dyson Sphere with shielded worlds. That's interesting. Asteroid manufactures around something which was a mega structure at some point, and finally a brain. Greetings, Unifiers. I am the automated psychosynthetic diplomatic unit, deployed to serve as an interface between. Aeternum and the rest of the galaxy in accordance with diplomatic protocols a scan will now be conducted of your civilization Due to your current level of technological development your request to communicate directly with the Aetonite forerunners has been denied In order to quench your species desire for knowledge and ensure non-interference in Aetonite affairs We have compiled basic information regarding our civilization within a databank which you may peruse at your leisure or peruse if you so desire or something Eternum consists of a civilization residing on Iondia, a birch world constructed around the galactic core. The original Aetonite homeworld of that is no longer inhabited, of all population currently residing on the birch world. In accordance with the protocols, they do not wish to be disturbed, and under no circumstances should the, the external galaxy be allowed to meddle in Aetonite affairs. The population is currently 10.6 quadrillion, occupying roughly 0.014% of the structure's habitable area. 
The estimated age of Eternum is 1.2 million standard cycles, 231,000 of which have been spent on the Birch World. This galactic cycle is the ninth cycle to re-establish the galactic core hyperlines, which will be automatically disrupted within the next few centuries by automated tachyon disruptors. Please do not attempt to meddle with the Aetonite civilization while the lines are opened. The Hierarchy managed to lose the war last time with our new Federation member, so I'm now going to war, and honestly, I'm probably not going to intervene too much. I need to upgrade my ships and everything else before we attack the consumer products, which are vastly stronger than Hierarchy, so I'm hoping that all of these here will be able to take out the Hierarchy and make them my tributary for Science me. Division. Our first analysis of the Aetonites have revealed that, as expected, their technological development and fleet strength far surpass our own. As such, in order to closely investigate and monitor the activities of this potentially dangerous precursor civilization, a new branch of intelligence has recently been created, known as the Aetonite Intelligence Agency. This specialized service will keep a watchful eye on these foreigners and will allow us to conduct a variety of projects related to them. It will also help us ensure our civilization is prepared for a potential conflict with the Aeternum. As such, the intelligence agency will collect all data regarding the Turnum as uh, we can possibly find in the form of Aetonite Technological Intel and analyse them in order to best learn to counter their ancient ships. Hello. Plus 5% damage, I can go up to plus 150%. How do we acquire more? Uh, special projects, I'm sure it will happen in the future closer to when they awaken. Defeating them as a chance, defeating their bigger ships as a higher chance, and unforeseen opportunities. Okay, so for now it's pretty dormant, but hopefully as time goes on, we'll be more in the know. Once again, that took absolutely ages, so I did have to intervene in the end, although it was definitely not a loss by our allies. It definitely wasn't a win either, so it was just constantly stalemating. Science division. Well, at least now they are a tributary. So who next? And I guess next will be the, I'll put them here, the consumer products. Over half the galaxy is now painted blue. So there we go, the Admiralty Operations. It's a very cute, it's a very cute, it's a very cute small megastructure. That is also very cool. Can't zoom in any further, annoyingly. How about if I grab that planet? There we go. I really like that. Very humanoid. Uh, no, very mammalian kind of um, ship design not to it. Which is very nice. So I'm now attacking the consumer products. They do have a defensive pact with Bliss over here, which is weird. They are almost equivalent to us. Consumer products are a lot weaker than us, so we're going to breeze through consumer products. I do have my Federation fleet also moving down here. This is just a quick um, Corvette fleet I've made to do a quick attack strike here. This is pretty much all of their fleets, so we'll deal with that nice and quickly. Hopefully, my allies over here are going to help out and attack Bliss, so it should, it should be a pretty clear victory. Now, annoyingly, our allies have made loads of claims which is really irritating, so we'll probably not get everything in this first war, but get a good chunk of it. Hopefully. Okay, we're getting there now. They've retook a lot of this territory, but I've almost pushed them completely back out of my space. They still haven't got their worlds back. Uh, you've just grabbed all that, so you're going back on yourself now. Yeah, things are looking fine. I just need to make sure they have no worlds. Then we can status quo whenever we want to. Also, a lot of the stuff I started building ages ago, as you've just, as you've just seen, is finally finishing off. I've put a lot of alloys and a lot of my resources just into things which will eventually give me bonuses. And they're all starting to finish off now. So soon, we're going to spike in power greatly. I mean, we're already at plus 12k tech, so that's good. Our rare resources are about to solve themselves. It's all looking good for the future. Well, that was satisfying. Lots of uh, small fleets then just getting obliterated. Oh, so very close. S 
Starting to run out of alloys, though, now. I am building at, like, my max capacity. I really, really need to get the tech for the, um, the alloy megastructure, the Gigaforge. I desperately need that now. You can't really do much more with the space we've got. Especially with our slow population growth, since we've gone with the Psychic one. There's just so much more we need to do. We're kind of... Kind of weirdly gone so heavy into, into like the mid-game mega structures. So we have loads and loads of things like the macro engineering sites. We now have multiple science next side just everywhere. But that's kind of the top of our tech. We also really haven't built up a proper super military. Just just enough to keep up with the demand. So that we keep on... Well, I'm hoping I'm investing correctly. With the art structures and the science nexus. Ugh, this one I can't even afford. I'm hoping that's going to make it easier later on. Well, whilst we're waiting around, I'm going to send my MEGA forces to take out some of these Leviathans. Lovely. Okay, not quite what I wanted, but that's fine. Uh, down here we have the Ether Drake. Over here we have the Dimensional Horror. Currently upgrading our Federation fleet loads so I can actually jump soon. Now I say Mega Forces. Obviously good enough fleet power now to take out the remaining other normal empires. But in comparison to the Fallen Empires with their ridiculous, just ridiculous strength. And the things we're going to fight later. We're very weak for how light it is in the game. Light, quote unquote. Uh, but again, it's just purely investing. I'm constantly building things which are going to keep on giving us more and more bonuses. So hopefully by the time it hits 2350, we are just going to be steamrolling ahead with power. That's the plan. It's, it's also very boring. There's very little footage, I imagine, actually getting into the video at this point. Because it's just... I'm building another one of these. I'm building the same thing over and over again. Because extra research speed, extra unity, it's all very important. And very dull. But really fun to play. Just dull to watch, I think. Well, here's a choice. So, we could go with Transcendence. This will instantly upgrade our people. And would allow us to hopefully get a... It's very light now, but get a very light Covenant. Or, we grab Gigastructural Constructs. Now, I'm fairly certain Transcendence is what's needed to make the Hyper Siphon. Or whatever it's actually called. The Psychic Siphon, the thing which allows us to summon the Unbidden. Because whoops it is, it would also give us loads of bonuses. But we're mostly going for the military aspect, and Gigastructural Constructs will give us access to that really big shipyard I've never been able to build before. And I really want to build that, because I think that just cements military might. Now, at the moment, our navy capacity is actually dreadful, because I haven't really been going into that, but I am going to start going into that now. So I think Gigastructural Constructs, and start working on some of the bigger... Uh, mega structures. We have loads of science nexus now. We don't need any more of them really, so I'm not going to build any more. Uh, we have three art installations going down, so I think now we should start focusing on other things like the star lifters. And I'm sure I'm building one somewhere. Somewhere I am built. There we are. And the forges and stuff like that. Start really elevating ourselves now. We have like plus 200% research speed. We don't need any more of that. We just need the actual resource amount. We are now Dragon Slayers. Which is actually something I'm probably going to activate constantly. That plus 10% happiness will pretty much give us full stability on almost all of our worlds. Our people are already very happy. This is just going to make them even happier. It's annoying everyone's so happy that we killed the beautiful space dragon. But you know, apparently our people are bloodthirsty. Is there any other ones I can go for? I think there's... Somewhere over here. Yeah, there's the... Dimensional Horror and the Void Spawn. Only day science vessel for the Void Spawn one. So we'll take out those two. Then, really, we should start thinking about going after one of the um, Fallen Empires. Not the Katzen. You can stay there, because you're scary. But these have attack moons and everything. I don't, I don't really want to go down the route of attack moons just yet, but I could. I mean, I have the money for it, and I do have the tech. But they have the asteroid artillery everywhere, they have super strong fleets, they have attack moons of their own. Having a couple of them in the fleet would be really beneficial. Maybe. Only just now getting our final tradition tree. As you can probably see by our unity, I'm now going way heavier into unity because I need all this finished. 
so this is Giga Construction. I think you need Macro Engineering to unlock this one, plus of course the Ascension perk. Might be wrong there, but that's how it feels. So straight away, Adoption Effect, Mega Structure Build Speed plus 20%. Straight away, fantastic. But then we can make it cost less Unity and Influence. Mega Structure Influence Upkeep reduced, Unity Output in increased, Diplomatic Weight from Economy increased, that's all well and good. That will increase the power of our Behemoth Planet Crafts and attack. Oh, of course, since we've got Giga Structural... Oh, we could just go with the attack planets. Yeah, maybe that's the goal. Try and build our first um, Behemoth Worlds and then go after the Fallen Empires. Ah, so I am going with the Worlds anyway, but that's so much fun. Energy production increased, upkeep reduced, and then extra damage. Oh, damage to the Atrium. Okay, perfect. So yeah, this is definitely going with them. Our relic Penrose Sphere has been fixed. It's amazing how in this mod having plus 4k, almost plus 5k alloys is just nowhere near enough. So now I'm focusing only on building the hyperforges and everything else, making sure we get as much resource as possible, as many alloys as possible, because now I have loads of half-finished mega structures around, because I had enough resources to start them, but not to finish them, because I'm not a smart person. So now I've got the question, do I start building the Hyperforge here as well, or do I start building the Hyperstructural Assembly Yard construction site? Now this is what I was talking about earlier, the Super Shipyard. I didn't realise, however, it also gives minerals, which is pretty awesome, because we are desperate for that. We do have a single star left to currently being built. Actually, no, we don't, because I'm currently waiting for alloys for that. No, yes I do. I do have it being built, just the basic level of it. It's fine, I am building it. I got way too greedy building stuff. Can I put it here? Okay, so how big does the star need to be? It's going to say the requirements. Da, 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 da. A B or A class. Now, I am building a... Well, I've got this star here, which I want to turn into a Dyson Beam. Aha! Dyson Beam next to the shipyard, right next to the scary thing. I don't really have many A or B, cla uh, B class stars in my little bit of space. It's kind of annoying, actually. So, remember early earlier when I was saying about how, oh, I'll just build the... Uh, the particle accelerators anywhere, that'll be fine. That was silly of me. That's an F. And yes, I know I can do the whole um, survey thing. I did it earlier, but I didn't find any, so... Oof, this is going to be a very um, important bit of space for us. I'm going to build a bastion here, I think, and maybe some asteroid defences. Yeah. I never build the asteroid defences, but I really do feel very um, vulnerable here. Oh, come on! Stop finishing everything now! I don't have the resources yet. I'm still building everything else. Okay. Good, that's just you finishing. Yeah, I'm just... There we go, I'm now hitting 5k. I was about to say I'm just shy of 5,000 alloys. I'm now getting 5,000, hopefully 6,000 when some of these things finish off. It's fine. We'll harvest stars to build ourselves some ships. Now, what I could do for my final ascension perk is go with... Not you, though. You are so fun. But no, where are you? There we are. Celestial War Warship Assembly. I've never really gone with this. It allows you to print moons by just harvesting planets, and I don't really know exactly how it works fully, but basically you don't have to find the moons every time, you essentially have the ability to just build them. But since we're going so much into just regular ships, I don't think I'll go with that. That's fun, but we don't really have that available to us. We could build the giant solar system, but I've done that so many times. I am thinking about going down Transcendence so we can get the psychic stuff. I think that would be more fun. And it would be silly as well, because suddenly the Unbidden will appear, but by then we should have Behemoth Planet Craft, so it shouldn't be a big issue. I think that's what I'm going to go with. The Great Khan has awoken. Honestly, I don't particularly um, favour their chances here. My ally next to them is definitely stronger than them, and I'm fairly certain Bliss is stronger than them, so I'm going to just watch and see if it gets any ground at all. Now, of course, we could defeat it, because I think that gives you a relic, though, doesn't it? Uh, I guess I'll send in my fleet, which still don't have jump drives. How? I've upgraded them so many times. They definitely do have jump drives in the um, thing. Oh, I guess someone sent a reinforcement. Yeah, which didn't have jump drives yet. These ones do, but I guess the ones that were sent didn't. Okay, as soon as I have jump drives, I'll go down there and try and help out. Is his name Voidspawn Voidspawn? 
Okay, get that please, and then go after you. Meanwhile... So I'm going to have a gateway there my home world, a gateway at the shipyard I'm currently building, which already looks really bloody cool. Still saving up alloys right now over here. I am building a new star lifter. I have one building over here, but it's too big and taking too long, so I'm building a smaller one. Everything is on its way. Also, now I have over plus 300% research speed, which is really cool. They're probably going to get a little bit of ground, then the empires will respond in time. Anyway, go and kill the horror. Science division reports a new breakthrough. There's always something silly about watching one of these spin. There we are. Okay, so there's both of those Leviathans down. I think that's actually it. I may just clear out some of the other groups then, I guess, with this fleet. A lot of them are just amoebas, which are actually really annoying because they keep on taking out the um, Federation fleet reinforcements. Because that's just where my allies are sending them, because they're dum-dums. Oh, yeah, there is the automated dreadnought, but that's not particularly interesting. Okay, you grab that, then grab that. Science division reports a new so, from the void spawn, I got this, Gargantuan Evolution, giving plus 5% energy credits from jobs. Our hyperstructural assembly yard's inner ring has been completed, housing vast fusion reactors and specialized refining facilities. It will process the plasma extracted by the not yet built stellar lifting pumps. Part of the processed plasma will be turned into alloys to maintain the structure, while the rest will be exported as minerals. Keep in mind that the structure will have a hefty engineering upkeep due to a large amount of scientists. Oh, okay. Interesting. Yeah, minus eight. Sorry, minus 180 for that. We don't quite have the alloys, but I want them right now. Probably should just, you know, wait a month, but still. Ta-da! At least it starts producing minerals, which we desperately need. What a cool concept. Just this shipyard built around the star, just harvesting the star to build everything. Ah, you see, this is what keeps happening. I keep building loads of projects, and the smaller ones are easy to finish, but these ones take so long, and I'm building too many at once. This is the priority. Though, if we do get the Dyson Sphere up and running, that's going to be really powerful. I meant to say Dyson Beam there. Okay, so we're now on the Plasma Pump stage. This is giving me plus 500 Navy Capacity and 500 Minerals per month at the cost of 400 Energy and 180 Research. The next stage is, wow... A lot more research and a lot of energy, but it does increase our... What's the second one? Oh, okay, so extra storage and even more naval capacity. Construction complete. I've been spamming reverse engineer... Um, well, we've got loads of artifacts now since we, have, since we got one of the other relics. Yeah, I've been spamming this one. I've got quite lucky lately getting a lot of engineering research, but this is better. Just plus 10% to everything. I'm glad this now scales properly, though, at least, because I'm getting, like, hundreds of thousands of research, I think, every time I get it, so that's lovely. Has been keeping things flowing a little bit faster. Inbound message traffic. Since I've been patient for once and, you know, waiting until the light game to start using them. Okay, Giga Construction is now finished. This is good for a number of reasons. First of all, because now it starts spending Unity elsewhere. Scientific Revolution, giving us plus 20% research speed and extra alternative. We can have a Grand Fleet, which we don't really need too much right now. So, Will to Power, and you for extra Megastructure build speed, and you for more minerals. Let's make sure that our uh, Unity isn't completely dead after that. It's going to be hurt, but not dead, hopefully. Come okay, on. There we go. Yep, plus 2k, that's enough. Or is it? Uh, maybe it's not. Okay, which one can I do without? I really do need the influence for a lot of things right now. I guess, really, just our minerals. We are building star lifters, as you can see. In fact, that's what I want the, the Unity for, to build this bigger star lifter. We're almost 8,000 alloys per month now, which is pretty insane. So, yeah, definitely need the Unity. But with that extra research speed, it's going to be fantastic. 
This will likely be the last normal war. Um, I'm going to war now to take out Bliss. Bliss controls Kingdom. So once I take one, I take the other. I think that's how it works. Uh, we do then have the Carnot. The Great Khan died and then, well, this has happened. They're pretty weak, but that's, that's it. They're so weak, I'll probably befriend them and then just make them our protector willingly. Our allies are pretty strong, so I'm not too concerned about this war. I am sending in the Federation fleet, of course, and that should be it. Yeah, we should just crush them. And this time, they're not everywhere, since we're not also fighting the consumer products. In fact, they're fighting for us. We're not going to have little fleets absolutely everywhere. And they don't control any of the more annoying um, wormholes. So, all is good. No idea why I started building this, honestly. Oh, I just finished it. That's good. In comparison to the other stuff we're doing, that is nothing. I mean, the extra sublight speed is nice, I guess. We could spam them. No, we're already spamming everything else. You see, as soon as I have any alloys stockpiled instantly, all I want to do is spend them all. Let's try and resist that for once. I know I said I wasn't going to spend it, but I am. I'm building a behemoth planet craft. At least one of them. It's so difficult to resist spending all these alloys. I could be building more worlds or something right now, but I know that the next phase of this is going to be super expensive and same with this one, and I need to make sure I can instantly start them. Meanwhile, my Federation fleet is just destroying some space over here. I'm just going to grab everything I can. Really should go for the stations more. If I can just make like a little protective bubble over here, that's going to make everything easier for my allies. The completion of the Yard's Outer Ring brings our dreams of endless fleet production one step closer to being a reality. Connected to the Inner Ring by a massive trust structure, this construct houses the necessary infrastructure to fuel the future shipyards with all the resources they need. Now we must finish the project once and for all by finally constructing the shipyards themselves. So that's the final stage, giving us 1,500 extra Navy capacity, 1,650 minerals, 40,000 extra resource storage, and plus 75%, I think that's ship build speed. And of course, having shipyards themselves. Monthly upkeep, though, is kind of insane. 2,400 energy, 900 research, and one influence. Soon. Okay, you're still being built. So actually, that didn't cost as much as I thought it would, so what do I do next? Um... I could start building another behemoth. I'm building one there. Do behemoths cost influence? I think they do, right? I'm not going crazy. They do, but not that much. Okay. Let's make two behemoth planet craft. We'll have almost unlimited ships soon. The Eternum are going to be waking up really soon, though. Okay. You should start moving soon, right? Wait, because you're my tributary and I didn't let you into the Federation... You're not actually fighting with me, are you? Ah. You are, though, so that's good. Yeah, we'll be fine, we just have to protect this area a bit more. I've stopped allowing my protectorates to be part of the Federation recently, just because they were really messing up a lot of the stuff. I will re-allow them soon, I just need to make sure I had complete control. Now I do, it doesn't really matter. So, yeah, they can join. Maybe later, maybe later, because that will... Slow down this, and I don't want this to be maxed. Oh, maybe they will stay away. I've become a bit more brutal than I originally intended. But it's for the good of the galaxy! Worrying reports are coming in from our intelligence agency, the Saturnum, the ancient foreigner civilization currently residing within the galactic core, has started to slowly yet steadily increase its activity both within its own borders and outside of them. Indeed, small Aetonite scout ships have been spotted venturing through the galaxy, and sensors are picking up increasing amounts of encrypted transmissions emanating from their birch world, indicating that a subtle yet impactful shift might seemingly be occurring within their civilization. We are currently uncertain if this is merely some sort of regular Aetonite protocol conducting, so conducted to potentially learn more about the rest of the galaxy, or if it is a warning that something more drastic is to come. It begins... At last, after decades of grueling work and hundreds of thousands of alloys spent, our hyperstructural assembly yard is complete, and its gigantic arrays of shipyards are capable of assembling immense quantities of vessels in a short amount of time, which will ensure our absolute naval dominance over the galaxy. 
Fueled by six, da -da -da. this immense star system spanning shipyard possesses unmatched production capabilities, granting plus 90 shipyard capacity and plus 35% ship build speed. They're actually saying plus 75% here, I'm not sure which one is true, but still. So, how do you actually use the shipyard then? Do you need to make a shipyard out of the star base next to it? Is that how it works? Because right now there's no option to actually, you know, use it. I'm assuming that must be how it works. Similar to some of the other mega structures, they connect to the star base. So I really should have built that first, but for some reason I thought it would be similar to the mega shipyard, which is just straight on that. Okay, my allies can deal with some of the smaller fleets. I jumped to you to ambush one of the fleets moving that way. I missed one of them, that's fine. Go back. I just want to take out all the stations so I can stop reinforcing. Following a series of intensive studies and surveys conducted on Eternum's peculiar behaviour, as well as cross-referencing their current behaviour with what little data the galactic archives possess on them, our researchers have concluded with 99.7% certainty that an Aeternite awakening is on the horizon. Would Eternite sound better? That probably also makes more sense. Okay, Eternite. As we speak, the Eternites appear to be reactivating ancient shipyards, restarting whatever remains of their industrial centres, and preparing their population and society for a grand return to the galactic scene, potentially for the first time in a hundred thousand years. Considering the sheer size and strength of their ancient armed vessels, this has led to some panic within our military high command. Fortunately, our scientists assure us that this rumoured awakening is not imminent. In fact, they believe that since Aeternum's population has been stagnant and hedonistic for several hundred thousand years. Fully readying their nation for a galactic war will take several years of intensive restructuring and reorganisation of both their society and military command. As such, they estimate that we currently have ten years before the Eternites make their grand return to the galactic scene, which may give us some valuable time to prepare for the coming storm. In order to keep tabs on the Eternites, our intelligence agency can now do a variety of new projects investigating the Eternum. Okay, it's not there yet, but I guess that stuff will pop up soon, right? Yeah, so there's the estimated time. I think we'll eventually get things to slow that down, along with just weakening them. Currently, we can just get more damage from stuff, but yeah. Hopefully, this war will be over by then. It's going to be a long, drawn-out war. And hopefully, we figure out how to fully activate our um, assembly yard. I need some more ships. Following additional study of Eternum, some of our scientists have started to believe that as it stands, there exist a number of glaring flaws within Eternum's precursor infrastructure and communications networks, which the Eternites are either overlooking or outright think they are too advanced for any younger species to exploit these flaws. But much like the Fallen Empires, their arrogance might very well be their downfall, as given enough resources, we might just be able to pinpoint these flaws and subsequently exploit them. This would thus allow us to stall... Eternite Awakening, and effectively by valuable time before they ultimately rejoin the galactic scene. We may view the various leads that our scientists have regarding these flaws in the monitoring screen. Okay, we have a lot more now available to us. What do we have then? Yeesh, a lot of stuff. 50,000 energy each, by the way. Just first thing I've just seen here. The Eternites use advanced loop quantum entanglement to instantaneously communicate over long distances. While the actual technology is far beyond our understanding, it might be wise to investigate the underlying principles behind said tech. So we can disrupt it. We have investigate Eternite structural engineering and then intelligence collection. It might be possible to somehow trick them into believing we are stronger or weaker than we actually are. And find some flaws in their designs. I think the, the communication ones most heavily hint towards slowing them down, I'd imagine. Eternite Communications Report Loophole. So it issued a special project, which cost quite a bit of um, physics research, but thankfully we have lots of tech right now, so that's fine. Following our analysis of the Eternite Communications methods, our scientists have concluded that, as expected, while the actual technology itself is far beyond understanding, the underlying methods it employs is actually remarkably simple. The Eternites employ networks of specialised particles linked via quantum entanglement. Oh yeah, 
completely simple, allowing for instantaneous communications regardless of distance. While they have enhanced these methods with copious amounts of psionics and quantum field manipulation, our scientists believe we might still be able to disrupt the basic entanglements which connect these particles together. Indeed, by emitting a powerful focus pulse of energy through both subspace and hyperspace, simple again, directed at the galactic core, we could effectively scramble the entanglements which the Eternites devices rely on to function. This process was, would, yeah, would of course be stupendously expensive, dyslexia there, and energy hungry, but it might very well buy us the valuable time we need in order to stand a chance against the Eternites. Oh, there you go, scramble. Currently, its operation will cost 500 per month for three years and will delay the awakening by six years. Once it completes, additionally, the Eternites will permanently suffer from minus 15% ship speed every time the operation is done. Well, yeah, definitely want to do that then. Meanwhile, I was correct here. So we have the hyperstructural assembly yard uplink, which gives us the plus 90 shipyard capacity to this tiny little starbase here. The ultimate starbase. So really now I need to start making some fleets, some proper battleship fleets. I wonder how the planet craft are doing. The planet craft are slowly moving along. Can't remember where the other one is, but there's two of them currently being built. Our engineering report has been finished, and with that, what we have found out is that their designs are incredibly ancient and likely created when they had more industrial capacity. So now, our scientists have speculated that by bombarding the core with a sort of storm consisting of small projectiles at an incredible speed, we could potentially inflict some damage to Eternite infrastructure forcing them to delay their awakening in order to repair it. If we do it correctly, potentially by passing the projectiles through a network of wormholes before they reach the core, their source might be incredibly difficult or impossible to track. Considering Eternum is likely relatively unaware of what happens outside of their cluster, this may w well let us act with total impunity. So of course, let's have a look see how expensive that is as well. I wonder if it gets more expensive over time. Ooh. Okay. So it costs 100,000 to do this, and then 250 minerals and 100 alloys per month for four, three years. And then at the end, they will be delayed anywhere between two and six years. It cannot be cancelled until it's done, and it will be, uh, and it will get progressively more expensive should we attempt it again. I didn't read that last time. As a turn, and will rapidly reinforce their shields and point defense systems to counter it, this can only be done four times. I didn't read that on the other one, though it could have been there, and I just missed it. So once I have the energy then, we'll do the last one as well. We currently have plus 20% damage against them at least, because of everything we've been doing, and our two worlds will soon be operational. Though we're definitely going to need more. I'm starting to think we might need more um, alloys, honestly, because I don't know how long we can keep them asleep. And of course, once these two first ones are done, it's going to keep them asleep for at least four more years, because I think it's between two and six on both. Maybe it was, I don't know. Sorry, two and four, two and six, two and five, two and eight. Okay, yep, we definitely need more alloys. Now, thankfully, I am building a new forge. I have to say Giga Forge here. I'm building the Hyper Forge. I have two other Hyper Forges. Just constantly need more alloys. Hey, there we go. Our Eternite Intelligence Agency reports that our operation to disrupt the communications has been successfully carried out. Thanks to our disruption efforts, the Eternite Awakening has been delayed by a few years, buying us valuable times to prepare our own forces. This will also have an impact on the coordination of their fleets, slowing them down significantly. As we've seen with the Katzen, reducing sublight speed is so important. We may carry out the operation again, if we so desire, which of course we do. This I'm actually going to read it properly. Okay, we've done a total of six times, and it will always... Okay, yeah, always be six years. A thousand per month. That's more than last time, right? So it is more expensive each time, but again, um, reducing their ship speed is my primary concern. It really is. Now, I still haven't chosen the final Ascension perk, because I can't decide. Warship assembly is awesome. I've never had Slice of Life, ever. Um, I love the idea... 
of making the, um... Oh, so I can't do the solar system since, since I don't have the Colossus one. And I do like this idea. If nothing else, mega structure build speed increased by 35%. Build cost minus 10%. That's insanely good. And then just stronger planet craft. That's all so incredibly good. And I've never done this one before. But if I go the psychic route, I get the psychic mega structures, which I've never had before either. And I could get a covenant. Printing attack moons, covenant and psychic and mega structures. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I honestly don't know. Both are so awesome. Uh... I just don't know. Maybe psychic mega structures, because I do like the idea of focusing on um on our normal fleets, even if it is against the, the planet craft of theirs. And just having a few planet craft. And I do really want to see what the psychic mega structures like, and it would be hilarious to randomly see the unbidden pop up. Oh, because this is more interesting. I've never seen the psychic mega structures. I don't even know what they are, but the printing thing I've definitely dabbled in before, so I've seen the basics of it. This is completely new to me. That's my logic. At first, I'm in the shroud, and we get nothing. So we've had our first two bits of shroud tech. Sadly, the recording software crashed there for a second, but we've had this, which is plus 5% energy credits from jobs. Then we have this one, deep shroud network, giving plus 5% happiness, plus 5% research speed, and plus 5% unity, which is really nice. Our agency reports that the bombarding campaign was a success. We've impeded them, and that's four years delayed. At this point, it's going to be ages, actually. So this doesn't really do anything except for impede them, right? Like, it's not giving us a bonus, for instance. That's a shame. Yeah, the ship speed one is definitely the most important. Then I guess I'll do this one one more time. 100k straight away. That is very expensive. I mean, we may as well. As long as we can get our worlds up, that's the main thing, really. I'm tempted to try and make this into a super bastion place. Maybe set down a habitat there, habitat there. A strongholds. You know what? Sure. Oh, I was saying that though, I need the influence. Uh, maybe. I say sure, what I actually mean is perhaps. I also really need more alloys. I need more everything right now. Everything's still being pushed to its absolute limit to make sure we're ready. I have made some fleets, finally. They're all made at once, which was weird, but yay. Normal ships, all cramped into one little space. Surely this war will be over soon. Annoyingly though, there's claims everywhere. I think over here. I have got my ground forces moving along. Every time they can jump, I'm just jumping them to the next place. Actually, this time it's so close, I think you can just... Oh, no, that's already taken. Good, good. I think over here are most of the claims, though, so I'm slowly making my way, claiming everything in the process. Science Division reports a new breakthrough. I know it's just a little thing, and it's actually one of the vanilla things, but Arcane Deciphering, waiting way longer to start doing this. I never do this, and I'm so glad I did this time. Yeah, it's almost 400,000 research. So I can now build the Shroud Capacitor, which takes 10 energy and 10 unity. In return, it gives plus 10% energy credits from jobs, 10% minerals, 10% of all sciences, and plus 5% happiness. Sure. Now, the scary thing is the Psychic Hyper Siphon. So this is the dangerous one. I believe this is what will allow the Unbidden to spawn, and I am fine with that because we'll definitely be strong enough to fight them. I'm not sure how long it'll take for them to spawn. I just know it causes an invasion eventually. I did very limited reading on this. That's the only thing I know about the Psychic one. I think there are other things. But I've, I've never seen this one. Well, technically I have, I guess, now, sadly, since the, um, the Eternum had one. Not quite sure what it actually does, though, so... Oh. Loads of energy, loads of research, and a, and a rare resource. Well, now I know. 
We are victorious. That took so long, but yeah, there we go. What a ble what a beautiful what a beautiful blue. What a beautiful blue indeed. Once our uh, world craft are done, I will be attacking this fallen empire. All will join us. Actually, what we will do is wait until the beam is completed, because then we can do um, total war. Oh, we don't need to spend influence on claims. We have our first planet craft. So let's actually see what the planet craft is like. Where are you? There we are. Can I stop that for a cannon? Uh, no, missiles. Okay, well, we have loads and loads of the cannons, which is obviously a very important thing there. We could give it more weapons to be better at short-range combat, but I think for now we'll just leave it in its normal state. Okay, move over here. This is where we're going to attack from once the beam is finished as well. The other world is now finally on its final stage, but it took so much resource, it was, it's quite behind. We can now build the Hyper Siphon, so... I don't know if the Unbidden spawn where the Siphon is. I don't know its mechanics at all. I'm going to put it right here. Inbound message traffic. Near the other Science empire. Division. Okay. I don't want to wait this long before they awaken. Um, I think at that point it's going to get dull because I'm already building uh, world ships myself. And although they are ridiculously strong, that is too far for me. So, this is my plan. I am going to allow them out myself in because I can do that as they're currently preparing their awakening they'll be more powerful the closer oh okay so they will actually be stronger than they are now ah that changes my plans a bit um I didn't realize they get, get stronger if they awaken well the later they get into awakening maybe 20 or 30 years at most honestly just because I do want to fight them I don't want it to I mean... Oh, there's the thing, though, isn't it? I feel like it's going to be one of those wars which is going to be all or nothing. It's going to be either utterly obliterated instantly or utterly victorious. How about I finish off all of the scrambles, then once all of the scrambles are finished, I release them. Because that's going to be way shorter than waiting until they're going to release themselves. I think that's the plan. Yeah, that sounds good to me for now. So the most annoying thing is the protectors have now declared war on one of our allies, so we have to protect them. So I'm not the one declaring war right now. On the upside, my world was already my world. Well, yeah, I guess my world was already there. I don't really want to go in against everything because it is just the world on its own right now, and that can be overwhelmed. So I want to just pick off the fleets when I can. How bad is this? Not bad at all, okay. Oh, that's irritating. So our allies have also made claims. Could you be more annoying? Okay, I guess we'll just have to build up our forces to attack the cats instead. But I do have just attack moons. Okay, no worlds. I'm about to get a third world as well. Once we go to war with the cats, what we can do is use our Dyson Beam to take out the home world. Actually, if we just take out a planet, will that destroy ships in here still because we could open the war by obliterating the system now of course that is like the majority of the things we want from going to war in the first place but it's actually not all that much just a few Gaia worlds yeah Gaia Gaia um a few ruined things here and there actually I don't really care I want the tech okay that's how we're gonna open up a war then Open war by destroying their home world, home system, home everything. Hopefully my world can deal with this. The second world is now done, but it's miles away. Well, just a few more than miles away, I suppose. Yeah.
This is what I mean by it can be overwhelmed by smaller craft. Thankfully, they don't really have enough smaller craft, so we still won, but that's a lot of damage against the world. Science division report success. The moons are a lot more vulnerable to that, I think. Okay, so I had some more alloy spare at one point, and I built some more of the um, science nexi. I can't resist! I've got a weird addiction to building science nexus. We now have access to the Doomsday Weapon. So with that now, I believe, if we go to war, even against a fallen empire that hasn't woken up, yep, total war, but how we're going to declare war is just by obliterating their home system, which I'm now looking may be everything they have anyway. Do I have any other worlds? Oh. Sorry, Katzen. If there's anything unique about you, I do feel rather mean about what I'm about to do. Remember, our entire species was created as a result of this empire in the centre of the galaxy obliterating all life as a precursor. I don't think we're going to um, feel too bad about what I'm about to do. Although it may break up the Federation. What we can do is, once it happens, we can check how much everyone hates me, and if they're... Ooh. Why does one give me more than the other? And if they do, I will change it so subjects can join the Federation so we don't lose the Federation. Enemy offensive action in there we are. This is not oh. a drill. Well, that crashed the game. <laughs> okay, try to, and... Oh, that's what it is! That's what it is! Oh no! I can't do it because that stupid, um, primitive civilization that lives there. Well, good to know I can never do that then. Curse you. I still wanted to do it somewhere, and honestly, landing ground forces there would have been a nightmare, so... Goodbye to the other um, civilization. I have successfully became the Galactic Custodian, and with that, I'm now trying to push the Galactic Defense Force so that we can build the Super Fleet. I'm now moving my two attack worlds over to here as well. We're going to be attacking the cats very soon. And we'll send in our battleships as well, basically acting as corvettes and meat shields for the battleships so I don't get hit by all of the moons all at once. Wait, is that all that's left? And of course it'd be in that system as well. I'll... Coffefe. The amount of research speed we're getting now is just insane. And I still have stored research as well because of those um, stellar accelerators. In fact, I've got over a million now. Anyway, I'm starting to convert some of our stars into neutron stars because there's not much space for me to claim. And honestly, I like the fact our empire is only this little blob here. I'm turning some of our stars into neutron stars so we can have more and more alloy production. So can you please move your butt over here? Then we'll start the construction of our stuff. The Great Portal linking our reality to the Shroud near the star has been fully activated. Pure energy is now pouring out of this artificial gate to the Psychic Realm, and our telepaths are already feeling the great boom that this direct link is granting their psionic abilities. Some skeptical elements of our society are worried that this portal could attract unwanted attention, but our scientists have proven that inter interdimensional travel is strictly impossible, and they assure us that this portal is too energetic to allow any organised level of being to pass through it. Right? Pray. So it's giving us... Oh, it's plus research speed! Oh, it's even better than I expected then. Plus 15% all research speed, extra FTL speed, a sensor range increase, habitability increase, and minerals. It gives us research just as a bulk, loads of energy, and a rare resource I've never seen before. Which is called... Uh, that. Psionic sublimate. Sublimate. Subby sub subs. Ah. So the Unbidden are arriving almost instantly then. 
that's how fast it causes problems. Okay, okay, sure, sure, yep, yep, yep. I'd have spent all my alloys building battleships because of that. Yep, 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 battleships would be good, please. Okay, where are they going to spawn is the question. Is that them right? No, that's the Guardians, which I really need to deal with at some point. Uh, am I going to have to look at the thing? Yes, I am. Oh, no, I think that's it. There they are. Can I destroy this system? Can I destroy this system? This system. Can I destroy it? Surely that doesn't work, right? Okay, if this works, I apologize. Okay, look. I'm going to win this fight regardless. I can make battleships just so ridiculously quickly. I have two planet craft and a third on the way. I have done this fight before and I've seen how it plays out. We win, basically. But I need to know if I can just nuke the Unbidden from space. Science Division reports a new breakthrough. Be good if their fleet stayed hit. Uh. Science Division reports success. Okay, so good news, bad news. Good news, the warp has been, the rift has been pretty much closed now, so they can't bring reinforcements. The bad news is they moved out of the way. So they're still in existence. Okay, can all forces please muster over here? We'll go through the um, center of the galaxy to get to them. Oh, wow. I wish I checked this. I didn't. Oh, I obviously didn't know. So there's options here to do with the Eternum. Cooperative intel gathering. We get three technological intel after five years. Establish the anti-alliance, which is a federation. Okay. You can invite empires into it. Fallen and Awakened Empire, so that's really cool. The Pan Galactic Federation. That means we'd lose our galaxy, though. Right? Our, our Federation, right? I don't know. I might Google that. Um, if we launch a preemptive strike, instead of manually declaring war... Every member will gain 30% extra damage and 60% extra ship speed for two years after war declaration. Additionally, every non-player member of the Alliance will automatically move their combined fleets to war. Ah, oh, that is so cool. Oh, I wish I knew about this. Okay, I think it's a bit late now, but that's a really cool aspect I've kind of just missed. I will, however, start to, um, to do that because, well, yeah. It's going to be about six, seven years, I think, now before we... Might, might declare war, because I think then I'll finish off all the communication stuff. So, that will be really nice. A few extra bits of intel mean a little bit more extra damage. Okay, I missed part of this fight, because they weren't doing anything, and suddenly they kind of just activated. Uh, their brains had apparently broke from the portal being destroyed. But actually, I don't know if the portal is destroyed. I'm going to have to jump into that system to find out. Fleet lost. Yeah, I hadn't had all my fleets ready yet, so that's worrying. Did you just build a station? Because that's unfair. Well, all of our regular fleets got obliterated, which made sense. There's only a few of them there. The rest of them are still on their way. But good to know that the planet craft can still um, do their thing. Oh, dear. But that's a bit much. That is a bit much. I don't really know what I can do to help you out, honestly. Um, uh... Let's see, extra armor, extra shield boost, I guess. I don't really need the extra damage from your things, but sure, ammunition, you are using cannons as well, I guess. Just run it as far away as possible. And we'll see that in just a moment. I wanted bigger fleets, so I started building some of those again. I've been focusing on energy weapon 
attack speed, so we can use that mine attack more often. Other than that, it's just been kinetic damage and um, shields. But we should focus a bit on missiles. There are a lot of missiles. Imagine jumping into this galaxy, you are the Apex Predator, and then just the planets themselves start shooting you. Ooh, on their own, I think they would have had some serious trouble. Remember that the Unbidden devour armor and hull very easily, but they're not very good versus shields. That got all of our shields down really quickly. Now let's see if the portal's there. No, we'll do this first, then we'll jump. Then we'll jump. Well, I am incredibly nervous about this, but this is it. That was the last of the communications being disrupted. They are now at minus one, sorry, minus ninety percent ship speed. We go to war. Our purpose will be fulfilled. Standing by to commence offensive operations. Weapons free. Warning: Non-compliant primitives exhibiting hostile behavior during recon reconstruction protocols. Initiating defense protocols. We have four behemoth world craft. We have lots and lots of regular ships. Of course, I'm going to take that out naturally, but let's see. Oh, they have so much. I'm hoping they split up. So what we'll do is we'll go around taking out the systems. Oh, hello. Who are you? Oh, so that's what the species is. Okay. Voidborn Unifiers, I am Alice Big Number, undisputed Empress of Eternum. Your quaint declaration of war has not gone unnoticed, and I have come to issue a final warning to your species. We are giving you a chance to stand down and realize the gravity of your mistake. Before we deploy our defensive protocols and erase your civilization from the galactic map, like the thousands that had the audacity to defy us in the past, and proof they destroyed lots in the past, for your own sake, we recommend you do the right choice. Too bad. Have you ever wondered what the Great Filter was? Your kind is about to find out, Voidborn. <laughs> They're the Great Filter. Oh dear. Engaging enemy station. Oh. Okay, so we're now super at war with them. The Grand Awakening. <sighs> Our recent and bold declaration of war on the Eternum has forced the ancient precursors to prematurely halt their preparations, and thus, even though their Grand Awakening was not completely done, Eternum is nonetheless starting to move their colossal fleet towards the rest of the galaxy. Their ancient industries and shipyards have been restarted, and although they did not produce quite as many ships as Eternium likely planned to have, they still managed to assemble a significant amount of ships before our declaration of war. Even if they are not performing at full efficiency, Eternum has now return to the galactic stage and seems armed conflict between them and the rest of the galaxy is unavoidable. Inhabitants of the galaxy, the time has come for the Eternites to reclaim their place as the sole rulers of the galactic stage. The only peace we shall accept is your complete and utter destruction. Make no futile attempts at delaying or negotiating with us, and perhaps some of your captured populace will be allowed to settle on our world alongside us. They're pretty mean, aren't they? Science division reports a new breakthrough. Oh wow, that lag. Okay, yes, they're declaring war on each of our tributaries, so we're at war multiple times with them, apparently. Oh no. Okay, so the Awakening has actually increased how many fleets they had. I thought they were just building up fleets in the background anyway. I didn't realize they'd all be added now. Right. Okay, looks like we're not actually gaining these systems, which is annoying. Okay, let's go around, and hopefully these fleets will be left on their own. Ooh, they are very slow, aren't they? That's perfect for us. Just keep going, obliterating all of these. And, um... And thus, regardless of how ready we were, Eternum and their armadas are now upon us. We must now hope our defences and fleets are enough to handle the storm. Fortunately, our in our intelligence agency believes that if we possess enough intel, we might just be able to reverse engineer 
Ooh, okay, so we can get their tech. While this would be tr tremendously expensive and quite dangerous, the benefit doing so is undeniable. In the meantime, we should attempt to gather as much intel as possible in order to increase our combat capabilities against them. Yeah, so currently we're doing plus 25% damage. Uh, okay, so to reverse engineer them, it requires... So 12 for that, and their planet craft is 20. Okay, yeah, we don't have anywhere near enough yet. Hopefully, some of their fleets will split. Oh, it looks like they might be. Look how slow they're moving. If we can ambush a couple of their fleets, we're going to win this. Just because we're going to keep all of our planet craft together if possible. I wonder what's in these worlds, these shielded worlds. Wish we were gaining these, that'd be good. Okay, yep, next one down, and let's... Oh, hopefully we get that before it does anything else. It seems to be confused about where it wants to go. Which is good for us. Science division report success. Ooh, our worlds went through first. Annoyingly, because how big they are, they kind of jump before reaching the end. I didn't realise they'd do that. Oh! Oh, I thought we hit their world. Haven't seen their world use its huge attack yet. Maybe it did and I just missed it. There we go. Our world destroyed their world. This gave us two technological intel. Yes, we don't have the system yet. It's kind of annoying that we don't get the system, so I can't make it our own, right? Aetionite planet refurbishment. Okay, yeah, so I need the, um, the intel then. Still, that gave us some intel, which has increased our um, damage. Oh, and a bit more. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Okay, so we got... I don't know if I was lucky or unlucky. We only got a little bit of intel from the main fleet. But we got a lot from the planet craft we destroyed. That's wonderful. Okay, continue going around. I was hoping that maybe the, the starcraft... The starcraft... The star bases would count, but apparently not. Just stick together and hopefully... Science division. Just hopefully they'll move out. I don't really know what they're doing right now. They seem very confused. I mean, we have been cutting off all of their communications for the last, like, 50 years, so maybe they're suddenly shocked. They can't even tell what's going on. Yeah, what a shame we didn't get these systems. Guess that would be too easy, wouldn't it? We'd have all that right now. Yeah, we can't just jump in right now. So all move to the starbase to heal up, and then I'll keep an eye on them to make sure they're not bunching up. Yeah, what I'm hoping to see is... Looks like they're heading towards some of the exits. Hopefully they will. If we can get some more intel, of course, every piece of intel is more damage against them. It's 5% damage, in fact. Ooh, their weapons are kind of cool. Kind of point blank this time. That's the only way to jump them. Oh, it's three fleets. Okay, I thought it was just like one or two, but nope, it's three. Yeah, battleships go down like there's a couple of hits, but they're definitely acting as good um, screens for our worlds. They don't do as much damage as you'd expect. Okay, two more intel because the planet graph went down. That was from just one of the regular ships. Like, we are losing ships, but just nowhere near as much as I thought we would. Division reports a new breakthrough. They have a lot of health, though. Okay, could you all please move to that star base? There's another group over there, obviously, you're going to want that. So, what are we at now? After all that, we're now at 12, so I can. I thought that requires 12. We need to have destroyed and analyze. Ooh, okay. Oh, okay, so we need to do a special project. Okay, so apparently I was misreading things. Um, Dyslexia's been hitting me hard today, like all day, and that's not too much of a surprise. Okay, they will construct 
patronite psychofabricators around shrouded worlds. Oh, we saw those early, didn't we? Was it here? Starbase. None of you are them, though, are they? No. See, I misread that as one of the world ones. Okay, so we're probably not going to be able to do that one. At least the other one's just a matter of intel, which hopefully we'll get soon. Just keep on going round every time we see a fleet on its own. Just take it out. I mean, Science it's their AI right now. Oh, yeah. They jumped anywhere? I don't think it's just been... No, it looks like it has been just contained. Right? All these gaps are just standard border gore for Stellaris and me. Got it. Meanwhile, we are making one more planet craft, which is good because I think the planet craft just went ahead of everything else. Delightful. Look how many cannon shots we have. I love the cannons. I still think the cannons are my favourite weapon. They're just so satisfying to watch. One off, and now we're doing plus 95% damage. Are you attacking? Oh, a fleet must have just jumped through. Okay. Unless it was just that last fleet being annoying. Which it could have been. Okay, so now we can do reverse engineer the planet craft. Research option gained. Refurbishment. Huh. So now we can... Research how to fix them up. I didn't expect their planet craft to be significantly weaker than ours. That's a bit disappointing, but also, I mean, good for the run, I suppose, but not the most fun. We almost have the tech as well. It's a very um, expensive tech. Oh, they're still making fleets. We've destroyed so many, but now there's just more and more of them pouring out, just constantly. Still haven't destroyed one of the ones we'd, um... Needed to, though. Yeah, not yet. I guess because we haven't allowed them to keep the shielded world for any amount of time. Science division report success. Okay, get back to there to defend these. We're now repairing their planet craft. Hopefully we can check what it's actually made of. I am really curious. Now we can make them ours using that thing, but uh, we don't have the resources for it anyway, so... Uh, sure, whatever. We could just charge in now. I, I honestly think we probably could. I mean, these are strong things, the Guardian units, but... We've destroyed most of their other fleets. I think I'll wait until we have their world up and running. The research has concluded, giving us that 15% extra damage. And one year until we have their planet craft, and hopefully we can see what it's made of. If not, what I will do after I finish recording all the normal footage for this video, I'll go into a new world, a new save, and I'll quickly... Um, figure out a way to take a look at them. I think if I use Observe straight away, I might be able to check it to them, check them out. Excuse me, game. We've had this. Okay, I'm assuming what just happened is that the last one may have been from our megastructure, then this one is from the normal 
end get? I don't really know. But for some reason, now we have Unbidden. Now, of course, thankfully, you know how to deal with this, so I'm going to deal with it as fast as possible so I don't end up um, allowing them to spawn in. Okay, so where are they then? I already said the name, but uh, where are they? Dimensional portal. It's currently located here. Wait, that's the same portal. Where's the new portal? Okay, this time they just got obliterated. Now, annoyingly as well, the cats have just woke up. Uh, because they want to try and save the galaxy, apparently. <sighs> so now we just have even more attack moons. It's still no real threat to us, but more than anything, it's just irritating. Okay, you lot uh, go round again, please. Okay, can we check out what you're made of? We can't. Okay, so I'm going to insert a clip here of Future Lathrix wants to play ball, actually taking a look-see at what this thing has. It doesn't seem to have the super-powered main weapon. So despite being terrifying, it seems like our planet craft are levels ahead. And if I knew that to begin with, I wouldn't have spawned in uh, planet craft because it would have made some really cool fights. But I just expected them to have planet craft weapons. So it would be fun, planet craft versus planet craft. Please, future Lathrix. Behold the benevolence of future Lathrix. So yes, they do have the super weapons here at the end. I'm not quite sure how their stats compare to the behemoth version. But they are plenty strong, and here's all the unique weapons and everything else which the Eternium use. Overall, a very, very strong craft. I'm not quite sure why they seem so much weaker than our craft. It could have been repeatables, it could have been just a matter of loads of fleets versus less. Honestly, I am thinking that perhaps it is just a matter of the reduced cooldown from all of that tech. Which makes our one seem so much more devastating. Anyway, back to the past. And back versus a more active Eternium. Our armed vessels have finally reached the heart of the Eternite civilization, the colossal birch world constructed around the galactic core. It is hard to fathom the sheer size and scale of this unbelievably ancient construct, which spans the better half of a light year and dominates the system. Surrounding it is an array of various Eternite-built megastructures, as well as some fearsome, highly equipped defense platforms intended on guarding this gigastructure. But perhaps the most striking feature of all is none other than this one. A monumental energy barrier which wraps around the entire structure structure, protecting it from orbital bombardment. Naturally, while the shield will not block ground invasions, it will definitely prevent our fleets from assisting our ground troops, reducing our capabilities on the ground. Fortunately, the intelligence agency believes that, like all shields, there might be a way to disrupt and deactivate it. If we possess enough intel, we may be able to do so remotely. Okay. Science Division, report success. Looks like we're attacking the heart itself there. Obviously, we're attacking the units inside. But looks like we're just attacking the birch world. Like, ah, never mind. We'll just go straight into it. Spaceport lost to enemy action. Look, your little traitor world following along. Okay, we're losing a lot of our battleships. Yeah, our fleets are being diminished rapidly. That's bad, because remember... Uh, nope, we destroyed theirs. Okay, I thought it was our one. The reason why our worlds aren't being destroyed so quickly is because they're not being focused on. With so many ships, a lot of their attacks are being diverted. It's really difficult to see what's going on here. Just numbers. Okay, we're now moving out to this section. We've still got battleships alive. There's still a lot of cannon fire from us. Our world's still mostly inside the Birch World, which is interesting to see. Very weird fight. Very weird indeed. Can you please focus on things I'm looking at for once? Almost done. Um, a fleet there and a fleet here.
Okay, so it takes three years, but we are going to bring down the shield. Now, we do have quite a few ground forces. Oh, we don't have 41,000 worth, though. We have, like... How many do we have? We have 16k. That's nowhere near enough. I honestly thought that might be enough, so I didn't really go mental making of them. Uh, maybe I should have. So, I'm just going to spend all those minerals we currently are losing. Okay. On as many psychic units as possible. Sorry, psionic units as possible. They're nice and strong. They're good versus morale. They have low collateral damage. They're kind of just what we want. So, just going to spam those on every system nearby to try and start bulking up our units. And then once the shield comes down, we can begin bombarding that as well. The massive energy barrier surrounding the world begins to flicker as the very processes enabling its existence are disrupted from beyond recovery by our focused beam of energy fired through subspace. Within mere hours, the shield undergoes catastrophic collapse and eventually completely unravels into the blackness of space. The world now lays bare for the first time in a million years, bereft of the barrier which had protected it for untold eons. Which basically means we can now bombard it, right? In conclusion, we can go boom. Uh, there it is. Yep, bombardment now begins. Science division report success. Still gonna take ages, but at least now we're weakening it as well as making more and more and more armed forces. Okay, it's finally landing by itself. Don't really know if this will win or not, but we do have loads more forces on, on its way. We have our allies around us. And even if we lose, it doesn't really matter too much because they're being bombarded. They can't heal. Yep, this is going to be this number for a while, so back in a second. Message Finally, the Shroud gave us something. One of our Admirals is now the Chosen One. I think an Admiral being a Chosen One really fits this Empire well. And we attacked and failed. Now we're just bombarding a little bit as we get- Oh, no, it landed by itself again. I don't think it's gonna win, but yeah, every time it does it, it's weakening them a little bit. It's just a waiting game. I'm also making um, Xenomorphs now. I don't think they're quite as good as our Sonic armies, but they're Far faster to build, and they do a little bit more damage, but they have no, um, well, it's less morale damage. Which may be better, honestly. Looking at it, I oh, know that one's morale's been broken, so it's doing less damage. Yeah, let me have a quick look see at the stats. So the Xenomorphs do that much. Wait. No, the Sonic armies do more damage. The Xenomorphs do more morale damage. Huh. I thought that was kind of the Sonic's main thing. Xenomorphs are just very, very good. Oh, so now I'm about to win. Now you're here to help me. With your gene warriors. Wow, you are nowhere near as strong as we are with all our upgrades. Okay, they're all disengaged now, so doing almost no damage back to us. Just a matter of finishing them off. The war is over. Following intense ground combat across the Birch World, our forces have managed to overwhelm the Eternite defenders who, despite their incredible technologies, were not able to withstand our might. With the loss of their one and only permanent settlement, the Eternites can no longer sustain their war effort and whatever remains of their empire will soon disappear. As we are the ones who have finally ended the Eternite menace once and for all, we have acquired a significant amount of diplomatic influence both within our empire and the rest of the galaxy giving us extra influence per month, plus 10% diplomatic weight. Birch World, very, <laughs> very poorly understood technology add um, modifier added, giving the following effects. Less resources from jobs, less pop growth, etc. And also giving Birch World, vastly unexplored modifier, giving the following effects. Clear blocker time, plus 200%, and cost, plus 200%. Well, do we get the world now? Inbound message traffic. The end of the Eternum. Now we have this system, so surely we, sh we should be getting all of these soon. And these. But for now at least, we have the world.
So we'll have to clear. Whoa. Okay, that's a truly ridiculous amount. But the thing is, we've already had the Birch World. We know how all this system works. It's clearly just we have to clear all this first. And we get lots of stuff anyway. Get to work. Though I don't... Okay, you are producing something despite all the negative modifiers. In fact, still producing quite a lot, including just a ridiculous amount of energy. Housing and happiness, entertainer jobs, amenities, happiness again. Empire modifier research speed plus 100%. Loads of energy. Just ridiculous amounts of everything. Beautiful. Now, the only thing left then, really, is the cats who are currently awake. Now, if I just bombard their home system, they will be destroyed, but the game will crash. And is there any more beautiful way to end this run? Sorry. Precursor Birch World plus 17... Yeah, so it's all just utterly insane. Rural world. Yeah, that's what this is. It's a rural world. Now, how do we get control of um, these mega structures? Now, I know normally you can go to the star in the system and claim them, but the problem is there's not one. <laughs> That's how it normally works, isn't it? You go to the star, it's like claim everything in the system. Yeah, there we go. Cl um, claim celestial warships. But there's not a star in the center of these systems for that. Oh, actually, some of them there are. Nope, you can't actually click on it. Oh, there we are. And that didn't work on the um, the mega structure anyway. Huh. How about if we just head to the? Ooh. So there is more stuff then. I'm glad I didn't bombard the world just yet. Okay. Once we get some more intel, we can activate the shield. I'm just waiting around for some more events to happen. Uh, right now, there is nothing really to do. So we continue to wait. As we assert control over the world, the former Eternite capital, and establish ourselves as the new masters, our local settlers slowly come to the realisation that the Birch World is vast. Extremely vast. Indeed, it appears that the Eternum's entire civilization and industry has only occupied less than a single percent of the megastructure's colossal habitable area. As such, humongous swathes of the virtual surface are quite literally completely uncharted. These areas have been left without any supervision for the last several hundred thousand years. Initial surveys of these unknown lands have revealed that they likely contain a true treasure trove of ancient technologies and abandoned infrastructure, presumably built by the Eternum in a distant past. Subsequently, many prominent elements many prominent elements of our scientific community are urging us to mount expeditions. Sure. We have charted 1%. Five years, four years, three years. Let's just do the small one for now. We can send an expedition to chart the surface. It'll cost monthly energy and alloys. Expeditions can bring back certain amounts of intel and artifacts. Ooh, and also some other stuff. Sure. Send the small one. Ooh. Wow, there's so much to this. And this is all, like, at the end. I mean, you have pretty much won the game here. Oh, I would like a weaker version of this. This would be such a cool um, origin. A weaker kind of this world. We have to figure it out and map it all out. That'd be really interesting. Okay, so there's a lot there. Oh, since I've formed a covenant with that entity, Science division. there's actually another megastructure. The psionic beacon. Illuminate. Okay. 
This immense facility is used to house millions of skilled engineers and particularly powerful telepaths working together in precise harmony. Houses a shroud entity to grant significant boons. Sure, let's put it on this um, brown dwarf. That looks pretty cool. So there we are. Um, the expedition was attacked. Thankfully, we're strong enough. And we continue on, along with getting some resource. Ow. Antique ruins. Having a higher practicality compared to the anomaly's complexity increases chance. Sure. So that was the scientist then. I do not care about being custodian all that much. Meanwhile, we are building the beacon. Okay, feel free to read these if you wish. There's so many events now, I'm not going to be reading them all out loud because the video is already going to be multiple hours long, I imagine. But we've got loads of artifacts and an intel. Colossal spaceship. Uh, let's not then. Too risky. I'm just going to want you to finish it off to see if it'll allow us to um, clear the world a bit easier. The spire has been installed. Next, the conduits. You know, I actually may have seen this one before ages ago. Now I'm seeing it. Our expedition is now returned. In addition to whatever they've encountered, they brought back two intel and some relics. This expeditions have explored 5% of the birch world, bringing the total area to 6%. So does that affect the world at all yet, or does it need to be higher? Ah, there we go. This debuff will be progressively removed as we explore 25%, 50%, 75%, and 100% of the surface. That will enable you to remove all those other things so you can actually have a functional birch world once again with all the other bonuses. Okay, so we've got that. So the only thing I want to do then now is build this spire. Then I'll have a quick check to see if we can get any other mega structures but it's playing for a little while. Then we're going to bombard the cats and crush the game, which is of course my equivalent of destroying the universe. So a little silly thing here, because we actually have the resources to build this thing, uh, it just goes to minus one, never actually builds until we've um, cleared some of the stuff. The complete psionic beacon, now housing a powerful navigator entity, will light the way throughout real space for our ships and may eventually be used in other ways. Our telepaths are already immersed by the immense power, eager to use the device with full potential. The beacon can be activated at any time by upgrading it or using an edict. Uh, the production may be enhanced by sublimating either pops with a specialised purge or telepaths with a decision. A complete sonic beacon, a galactic lighthouse is home to the... Okay. The effects currently at FDL speed increased, sublight speed increased, hyper jump charge time minus and jump drive range increased. It gives us research and a bit of that sublimate, which we've been gathering for a long time now. We have... Yeah, quite a bit of it, despite only just getting this. So what happens when we activate the beacon, then? Hello! The beacon activates. Its sonic light can be felt all across our empire. The navigator is waiting expectantly. Whatever we'd like to do here, it looks like it will enjoy its part in it. Its voice begins to resonate within our telepath's minds. What is it you wish to do? Illuminate. Illuminate Shroud World, making it colonizable. The Shroud will give us the ability to travel vast distances temporarily so we can jump anywhere. Dominate. Ooh. Mind control an entire system by flooding it with sonic entities. Requires, require us to control or own at least one planet in the system. Ah, oh, that's a shame. The system will be transferred to us regardless of if we're in total war or not. Its inhabitants, including those on the planet we own or control, will become psychic and become comatose. Oof. Completely removing their ability to produce any resources whatsoever. All armies spawned from these populations will be practically powerless. Okay, we can turn a world into a shrouded world. Summon a horde of psionic avatars on an enemy planet who will fight on our behalf. Imprint an admiral with the mark of the shroud. Has a chance of granting powerful traits to the admiral. 
but may also destroy him. Control at least one planet to the system. Oh. Never mind then, we're going to fight with the captain and then use Dominate using our new um our new friend here. To control the entire system. So all we need to do is control at least one of their worlds. Is there one which is a bit weaker than the others? There we go, 12k, perfect. Okay, all forces, please go towards the cats. Can you just all jump there already? Well, that's pretty good. Any who can jump, please do. Any who can't, get there soon. All ground forces also move over. That would be great. With our world crafts and everything else currently here, it really won't take too long to take out everything. We even, of course, have the Eternium um, world craft with us. Science division reports a new break. Of all the ground forces we made up during all of our wars over here, we definitely have enough to take them out as well. At least that weaker world. And as soon as we have the weaker world, we're going to use the Dominate ability and see just how that works. Nope, there's some of their moons. Science Division reports a new breakthrough. So that was pretty much everything. Yep, just have one moon left and that's it. All of our worlds are closing in. There's nothing they can do to stop us now. Inbound message traffic. Select the system you wish to dominate. So, annoyingly, the starbase is owned by our ally, but I think it still works. Oh. Very well. The system's inhabitants shall be cast into, a, into eternal, dreamless slumber. Inbound message traffic. Oh, it happens straight away. Enthralled members of the species are in a comatose state, unable to contribute to society at all. Yeah, that's it. Every single... Oh, but they resisted, look. Huh. I wonder if we can destroy this world. I... You know what? I bet you can't even destroy this world. The Grand Bunny is defending it after all. So that's pretty much it. There's a couple of worlds left. We'll just quickly um, jump to those and take them out. But I'm going to see if you can destroy that world. So let's go back to our super weapon. Select target. Ooh. Oh. This is an event with literally the world I was just talking about. Huh, it made them stronger. That's why they're so strong. Fascinating. Let's see if it'll survive this thing, though. So what type of star are we currently in? We're at type K. Gatso, planet, and you. Destroy it. I did click the right one, yeah? There we are. Science Division reports a new breakthrough. Inbound oh. message traffic. It started being destroyed. There's less now. There's less of a garrison. Did it just do damage? It didn't actually fully destroy it. Are they going to say anything about that? Am I going to get an event saying, oh, by the way, that doesn't work either? Inbound message traffic. And that is it. Every single member of the galactic community is now part of our federation. The cats have been removed. The only thing left are the uh, psychic bunnies we accidentally empowered, but that's it. 
I wonder if we tried to shroud the world, if it would do the same thing then, since it was talking about that. Let's just see what that would do. But we could try and break it again. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'll wait for this to cool down. We'll have one more go at trying to break it, see if it weakens it again. And after that, we'll try and shroud it, which I assume is only going to empower it further. Okay, firing again. Any second now. There it is. So it counts as a shattered world briefly there. Oh, and it's back! <laughs> it just pops back every time. Oh, so all that's happening, so all that happened then is it reset to its original strength before we tried to um, dominate it. Okay. That's what happened. So I wonder what happens with the others, if we can even target it with the beacon. It says hostile. Aha! It does understand it's a hostile world, even though it's not classed as um, hostile right now. Where is it? Oh, I've lost where everything is right now. As you can imagine, all that actually happened was the exact same event as before. It simply popped up saying, Your Tom Foolery simply made us stronger. Ha ha! And then they're back to that strength. That is it. So with that, I think I've done everything I wanted to do in this run. I think the Eternum are a really, really fun crisis, and of course, I didn't realise the normal endgame crisis still spawns, so it's more of an extra threat, not the main threat. I do think it should be a little bit more difficult to keep them asleep. Maybe I should have set the endgame earlier, but then the normal endgame crisis would have also been a bit earlier. Perhaps I think maybe they could be considered the mid-game crisis of how early I set it. I'm not too sure. Either way, though, they are super, super fun. And I can't believe how much detail is in the Birch World itself. This this mod will never cease to amaze me of how much detail there is in it. But this is going to be the last playthrough, and especially the last modded playthrough, for a good while now. The Overlord DLC is coming out. It normally takes me a week or two to make these full playthroughs. So expect one of those, hopefully, by the end of the month with the new DLC. Either being a poor little empire being controlled by another, or a more dominant force colonising the galaxy in true British fashion. So with that... Thank you so much for watching. If you have enjoyed today's video, then of course, likes, favourites, shares, comments, all that good stuff helps out me, helps out the channel, and most importantly, shows that Stellaris is a series you wish to see continue in the future. Thank you so, so much for watching, and goodbye. Now it feels weird not crashing the game to end it, but perhaps this is a better way. Thank you, and goodbye.